to have a basketball discussion. Um, Tim and the board had asked me to, to talk about a few certain topics. So I'm going to throw up some, some concepts, some bullet points, um, and I'd really just like to, to have a discussion with some stuff with, with all you uh, men and women. So I think it's important to, um, with, with anything, with a business presentation, with a, uh, a, a class, a discussion, a speech, whatever, to, to qualify. So for anybody, so just so you know a little bit about me, I'm a father, I've got a son, uh, Cameron, who just turned four, October 1st, um, <clears throat> divorced, that, that's making basketball scheduling and stuff, the parenting plan, very challenging, um, but, but it's easy. Family and Cameron come first, even when the checks get really big. Um, I was in the PMPOA for four years, on the board, I was the president for two years, I was evaluations chair, I've been an evaluator, I was very active with WOA, evaluated state tournaments, things like that, and I got the chance to work two state tournaments. Um, now, I'm still connected to the PMDOA, I don't have time to evaluate anymore, um, but uh, I, I have a network of, of folks that I've worked with, talked with throughout the year. Um, still connected preseason when if I can come to an academy or something I'm always there um, when these guys ask if I'm available I'm <clears throat> currently working at the college level and then I'm also been um, uh, very involved uh, from the inception of the Emerald City Officials Academy which is um, kind of really um, developed into if not the one of the top officials training academies we can't go anywhere without people asking us how to go, who's there, how'd you guys get that person there? I mean, um, it's just, uh, I, th I think the concept of it and everything. So, been very involved with that. So, and then I'm a business development manager with uh, Comcast for our ad sales division. So, um, I want to find out a little bit about, about uh, who you are. So. We can just take five minutes and go around the room. I think it's important, as we have a discussion, I kind of want to know who you guys are and, and what you do, you could, aside from basketball, because I think that's directly related to what we do with basketball, and I think we can benefit from both what we learn in the professional setting, apply it to basketball, what we learn in basketball, apply it to uh, our lives. Um, so let's start, I know a little bit about Rod, but what's new? You got married? Yeah, awesome. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to keep up with all the young bucks out here and keep my position in life. And I've been in the state for about 16 years or so. And so you're never too old to learn new tricks. So actually this year I will say that after going to Canada, I probably have the concept of watching the beat I've heard it for many years. I didn't understand it. For some reason it kind of clicked in this year. It makes a difference. You guys, I saw that presentation yesterday. That one play where the guy had the charts call. I looked at it the first time. I looked at it from the offense, and it was questionable. But what? Why you think about it? Why you hope? But if you looked at the defense, it was really crystal clear. It really made a difference. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at. Jeez, man, I think it took me about five or six years to learn how to referee the defense. I heard it over and over. Um, Thought I knew how to do it and until I really started looking at a lot of plays, a lot of clips on the tape. I never really figured it out. So let's go here. All right, Jeff Rod. I'm married. I have Did you say Jeff? Jeff. All right, cool. I didn't remember that one. <laughs> we have a connection. Right? Yeah. Uh, I'm married. I have two adult kids who are not in the home. Uh, this will be my fourth year doing this. Uh, I just want to get his. Uh, I don't know as good as, as good as I can. I played my whole life, coached, and then I was out there. So I had to give up playing, and uh, I just love the game. So cool. Awesome. I'm Steve Latimer. I'm starting my fourth year as well. I make real estate investment professional. Uh, my kids are both out of the house in the sense that they're both in college, so plenty of time to go work basketball games. 
currently, and um, again, starting a little later in my fourth year, my goals and objectives are just scrambling up and learning curve as fast as I can get there. So, cool. Cool. Keith Elliott, I've uh, been on the girl side for about seven years now, made varsity last year. Uh, third year on the boys side, trying to work my way wet from JD to varsity. Uh, I haven't been a part of the academy, but this is my first day. I want to start taking advantage of the training courses. Excellent. Um, I work in supply chain operations for Panasonic. We do inside entertainment systems on aircrafts. Uh, not married, but been in a relationship where we the same lady for 10 years. We've got kids. We two people. Well, that's our kid. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the goal is pretty similar to Jeff's, is just that. You know, I love the game, I love prepping, but uh, just to go as far as I can, I don't really have it. I'm not really kind of in college. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the, the high school level. Um, for me right now, I think the commitment to the college level would be just not what I was before. That might change if I, you know, later on, but uh, for now, I'm not happy with what I'm doing. Yeah. But if I can make the varsity level on boys and, and, and maintain the varsity level on girls, I'd be pretty good to play with Doing stuff like this, you got a great chance. <laughs> Uh, here. Uh, name's Peyton Coffin. I've been with BMUA and it's the WB for about uh, six years now. Uh, father of a couple of kids. Girl is now in college in, uh, in Jane, her son's Western Washington. After he's finished learning how to bus tables and get a good job. <laughs> uh, my goal is here, actually, I'm auditing the course. Uh, I, can't sign up for it because I do a lot of late season baseball and belt league championship games, so uh, we can do all, all the training. So sliding in on Tim's graciousness by allowing us to learn more. Uh, basketball goals. I'm 62, bad knees, terrible feet. I'm never going to be varsity. Just you know, I know I can't cut it. And, you know, you know I like to see the younger guys that are going to be with me and be away for 20 years. I guess those high level games. Awesome. And uh, so I concentrate and ask your signers to keep you mid to low level, and that makes me work with an awful lot of apprentices and first and second year referees. So, uh, as well as the fact that I'm a terrible referee and need to get a lot better, the more I learn, the more I can pass on and make them more comfortable so they can do better. Okay, so that's awesome. I've worked with Peyton, he's been my dad. <laughs> you say Peyton with a P? Yes. Cool. I just saw. Here, Mike Salier is my fourth year. Um, this is actually my fourth camp I've been to this summer. Um, I got three kids, junior high and elementary school, and I'm probably as happy as trying to get as high up as I can in high school level. Very early in college aspirations. Very addicting, so I enjoy doing this. Can't get enough of it sometimes. It's Awesome. I'm Mitch Williams. Yeah, right, Mitch? Yeah, I was at the ECOA camp at UW. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's my second year with the organization. I'm a young single guy. Um, I've always liked basketball. I played it growing up. And, uh, you know, the opportunity to, to make a few extra bucks and try and move up as high as I can, um, you know, it, it excites me. And uh, yeah, I work at Boeing. I'm a business and financial analyst. Cool. Here. Hi, Scott Coots. Um, Larry, father of two, son who started at Oregon State, uh, daughters a junior. Uh, she's played JV at Skyline, hopefully she'll make varsity this year. I coached there uh, selecting for four years, the girls are now juniors. Um, wife and I recently sold our business, so I'm looking forward. Anybody need a, somebody in the data storage? Uh, <laughs> We all do. <laughs> <laughs> we have to. <laughs> so, uh, um, looking for work currently. Just had shoulder replacement surgery 10 days ago. So, I've had to drop out of the court sessions, but I still want to make the, uh, the book sessions here. And my goals are just to, uh, you know, just stay connected to the game and, and get better every year. Just, it's a challenge, and I um, just want to get better so I don't. Uh, you know, so I, so I just feel more confident doing what I'm doing and, and feel good about what I'm doing. Very cool. My name's Dave Gunning. Um, I'm not attending the camp, this camp, I attended the UCLA camp earlier in the year. Yep. And um, 
been married for 23 years, got three boys, uh, one at WSU, one at Eastern, and one at Camp Ridge High School. Coached all their sports, football, baseball, and basketball, and that. I kind of wish I would have stuck with earlier. My life is uh, about way more exciting and rewarding than I ever thought it would be. This is, I'm starting my third year. First year, um, I didn't realize kind of how uh, much time it would take. So my first year really didn't count too much. So my second year, my goals, um, I played in state B basketball in high school. Can I'd like to collect it up. Very cool. For a tournament, not permanently. Right. <laughs> yeah, <just> clarify. <laughs> Here, uh, Scott Ramage, fourth year. Uh, two girls, 15 and 18. Um, I work at an insurance agency downtown Seattle. Um, just basically want to get better at what I'm doing. Sometimes I feel kind of lost out there and watch some new high level guys, and I'm like, to get, just want to get better. Yeah. Who else sometimes feels lost out there? <laughs> <laughs> Love the honesty. <laughs> How about here? Uh, Elisa Hope, um, been divorced for 12 years. I've got four kids. Well, this one got married this summer, so that's kind of interesting. <laughs> um, I've taken and coached teams, um, AAU teams, and taken them to nationals. Um, and I coached the little guys all the way up through then. And so it's kind of my turn to get back. And I ran the table for a long time. So it's a little different to have this perspective. Um, I'm an operations manager for the largest real estate company in the state. What do you mean? No, Oklahoma Bank of Maine. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. And downtown Bellevue. And we're like right now the only profitable branch in the country practically. Um, but we've got the right market. Um, and I like to be varsity. It's my third year of prepping. So. Great. Right here. David Emmons, uh, starting my fourth year as an insurance broker. Scott and I competing against each other. <laughs> um, grew up in a town that was all about basketball, Richland. I think one of your peers, Dick Cartmel, and I. Yep. Play together. Yeah. We're good friends growing up. Oh, excellent. Love. What's love your last name? Emmons. Emmons. Yeah, I've been in this thing block this day. Very good. Um, cool. A friend of mine is this Division One. I've been doing it for 30 years. Well, um, I've made a couple championship games. And so yeah. Good. But I uh, love the game of basketball. Four kids, been there 30 years. I, I kept score for a high school, still do, even more high school for, for my 10th year. And just said, why am I sitting here? I'll kind of be on the floor. And be as close as basketball as I can get. Um, want to get to varsity level. Want to okay. rep some of those games at the varsity level. Who, uh, you guys remember the, 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 the Phelan five second call in the NCAA tournament last year? Uh, what game was it? Uh, it was crucial time. It was only like four seconds. Arizona, Texas, seconds. I think, right? Was that Texas? Ar Texas, Arizona? Yeah. Texas, Arizona. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was Dick. Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It's, uh, uh, you know, 30 years, three national, cha two national championship games, back to back, seven final fours, um, done everything, you know, um, used to get away with everything until I was 16 cameras on the court, now still does everything right. Um, at the Pac-12 West Coast Big West training camp we had a couple weeks ago, um, just so humble, he stands up and he goes, don't ever forget how quick your life can change in five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> or, or four seconds. Or, 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 yeah, or four point two. Yeah. Which, which Vernon Harris, the guy who worked the national championship this year, said from the back of the room. So um, great guy though. I've got fifteen family members in Kenwick too. So are you okay? You know, I'm also a lot of great athletes. Um, not a ton of great referees come out of that area though. I think it's training. Well, we had a guy at the SWDB camp that said, come back to Richmond. Yeah, we're, start, we're starting to get to Spokane's come around. We're starting to get to the Tri-Cities, but, you know, not a ton. No. But great sports, <laughs> great, great athletes, great sports come out of there. Yeah, but, yeah. How about here? Uh, I'm Kevin Butcher, uh, first year with uh, PNBOA. I've been addicted to a traveling salesman for eight, nine years of my life now. Now I finally have settled in. I have a wife, two kids. I uh, started officiating over in Spokane about five years ago. This is my fifth season. Transferred over to Boise. Made varsity list each place I was at, but never got to do varsity games because I've moved. So I'm just in this awkward 
time. Yeah. But I am ready to uh, settle in. I found great love here with the CMBOA, and uh, I want to just move up as far and as quickly as I can. Yeah. And I'm just a sponge for information. You know, Tim is awesome to listen to, and everybody's just great to listen to. This camp has been phenomenal for me. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, yeah, it's good. We got. Uh, you know, Burkhardt, Peterson, some of those guys are really Spokane, you work with them well. Randy, uh, Mike Peterson. Yeah, I've worked a lot of those guys over there. Ryan, Tyson, and the boys. Tyson, boys. I've worked a lot with Tyson. Yeah, we feel like we really have a good family of officials here in the Northwest region that extends to Boise and Spokane and everything. It's pretty unique. Because I've reffed in Colorado <clears throat> and in the Pacific Northwest. And we got a pretty unique. A lot of really good officials out of Boise. Yeah. Right but I still do two games in varsity. Yeah. Uh, my, name is, <coughs> my name is Daniel. Um, I don't have any kids. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Sure. <laughs> 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 That's the first non-competent thing I've <laughs> so far. There was Everybody else has been like, yeah. no kids that I know of. Right. Uh, I've done, I've been officiating, this is, I just finished my eighth year, so going on my ninth year. Um, Where did you start at five? I started at <laughs> yeah. 15. Yeah, 15, and I got thrown into Seattle Parks and Rec, which was not the best experience. <laughs> <laughs> you know, built some tough skin through it. Um, I've worked multiple different jobs, and I think it's what I love. So um, I've dedicated this whole year, actually, to just officiating. And, um, Daniel got to work some pro am stuff this summer. Stepped in. What happened? How, how come you stepped in the fourth quarter of that one game? Uh, one official wasn't very happy and left the gym. That's <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's. Um, I had a long history with pro am in, in this town and. Uh, um, I've uh, been threatened a few times on the court and got threatened that day and decided to leave. So luckily Daniel was there and I walked out. I think the important thing to, to say there is that, that, that we're, we're in control of our careers and what we do with this profession. And I, I just, I love it. I, I knew that was going to take a few minutes. The group was just the right size to do that. But, um, and I, I'm not intentionally forgetting Tim. I'm going to talk for him in a second. Um, but uh, I heard a lot of confidence and, and um, surety, like in, in why you're here and what you're doing. That's inspiring to me. That's really cool. Um, Tim, uh, we've all heard. You guys have to listen to him every meeting and all that. So, but um, I, I need to make a statement for the PMBOA. The, the PMBOA has been through some different stages and stuff throughout the last decade or so. And the PMBOA has done an outstanding job the last two or three years of really embracing what's going on as the big picture with basketball officiating in Seattle and the Northwest. So I commend Tim and the board for, 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 for really adopting that and being part of the bigger picture. It hasn't always been that way. Um, and it hasn't always been real progressive and open-minded, but it is today. Uh, restart. We'll get rid of that. Cool, so let's let's dive in. Let's get after this. So I looked at your guys' PMBOA focus from this academy, and I think it's important when you're asked to do something that you come in and you, you stay aligned with, with the big picture of what's going on, instead of coming in here and, and uh, just going off on a different tangent. So, um, you know, you guys have been talking core positioning, whistle tempo, and what I feel we're talking about today is play calling and crew communication, and did we get the play right and why? And then um, rule application, were the rules properly applied? I think the four main areas we're going to focus on today fall into, into that area. Um, if anybody has any questions on whistle, tempo, core position, wherever throughout this, this is our discussion, so feel free. But as I looked at that, I feel really that's where we're at. So the first one, um, on the list is timing. And so, hey, welcome. And Anthony, yeah, good to have you. We already did introductions, you're late, so you're 
<laughs> no, you're probably not late. You're probably Can I say though, Jeff? Yes, go ahead. He's from the Tacoma Association. Yes. And we've opened this, these classes to all of Everett and Tacoma, and you're our first guest. And I thank you for coming up here. But he should be working in the Seattle Association. So we need to do some arm bending today. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. FYI. Yeah. Comes from an officiating family. You don't have to go to Eaton Gills um, so let's just talk about a few things with timing. Um, start, stop, reset. I think it's a career-long process. I worked a scrimmage in Northwest College yesterday, and I truly felt for the first time in 12 years officiating that I've got this nail. I mean, I, I, I don't miss, I don't miss a possession anymore without having 100% awareness of the clock and the shot clocks. I could not say that three years ago. This is a this is a career long process. So the only thing I'll say there, break it down into simple things. If if for 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 if, if you already have it, great. Because some of you probably do. Um, it, I had to break it down into the stages. I had to for a couple years say, okay, I'm going to make sure the clock stops every time somebody blows their whistle. This whole game. And then I moved on. Okay, I got that. Because my experience has been once you get something with timing, you just have it. It's just part of what you do out there. It's innate. So then I moved on to let's make sure the clock starts. Let's make sure um, I get resets with the shot clock on a foul. And now I, I just got it. And it took, it took, it took, I've had it for two years, it took 10 years. So it's a career long process. Shot clock. The one thing I wanted to say about the shot clock is be aware of atypical situations. Where you're going to get in trouble with shot clock is when there's air balls, when a ball's saved out of bounds, when there's a loose ball, or when there's quick steals. Something that doesn't usually happen in a normal possession in a basketball game. That's a very good time to take a glance up and make sure you're okay. Most other, my experiences, most other times, you're usually okay. The shot clock operator has moderate to really good skills, and they know when to start, stop, reset the shot clock, for the most part, right? But these ones, these ones bite us. Shot clock, uh, possession, no possession. Huge emphasis, things that officials, the NBA doesn't miss it anymore. College officials are still missing it. It's a huge point of emphasis is team A has the ball, team B jumps out of bounds to save a ball and throws the ball back in the court. And we're just like, we're not resetting the shot clock. That's clearly, if you read, if, if you can grab the ball and redirect it, that's possession. Just err on the side of possession. The, the little tip ones are a little different. But, but that's another one just to be aware of. I was just kind of thinking of stuff. Does everybody understand that? Save. Most likely, there's going to be possession. It's going to be a reset. So for tips, would you reset the clock? Not, not on tips. But if a guy's jumping out of bounds and he's able to grab the ball in one hand or two hands and redirect it, that's a possession. So if he's running out of bounds and he just tips it behind his head, that's not okay. So how do you handle that in the game then, as far as if the clock didn't sit? If he didn't catch it, you see. We're still, you know, you stop the game? Or yep, stop the game. Stop. Yep, reset. You might put the fast break going on, but he saved it and... Oh, well, fast break's different. It's it's going to get it. It's going to reset. It's going to fix it. Yeah, fast break means he saved it and his team got it. Or, or the other team got it. I mean, so you're going the other way. Right. I'm talking about the ones where it's it's saved and then team A still has it. They dribble a couple he's times. Saved. And you look up and it's at like seven. Yeah. And you're like, wait a second. Stop. Team B had possession, reset, right? And it, it, they're just, they're just a uh, you know, little atypical. These, these two points kind of, kind of connect with each other, you know, in an atypical situation. Um, let me talk to you guys about uh, pregame with the timer. And I call it the mini time test. Um, I do, every time I'm the crew chief, at every level, I do this. Um, 
sometimes at other sometimes I ask depending on the personality of the crew chief that I'm working with. Um, I go to the table and, and, and I strongly recommend this at the high school level. I recommend you go to the table and if, Jay, all levels use the shot clock now, right? So I recommend you go to the table and you ask the shot clock operator to start it, stop it, reset it, and then you have the reset to 15 for a kickball and reset it to 15. Okay? A, you'll find out if there's anything wrong with the clock. Oh, I'm sorry. We only have full, full yeah. resets only. In high full, school. full. Sorry. So full. So full only. So no problem. Sorry. But I do have them do that as an exercise so that they know how to put a specific amount of time. Right. On okay. So it's not 15. It's just pick right. some number. Start it. Stop it. Reset it, and then set it to 20 or 18 or whatever number you want to pick. Seven. So if there's an error, you know how to reset it. What this will show you is. It'll show you if you have a problem there. And sometimes you will identify that there is a problem. There's a mechanical problem with the device. And you have time to fix it before the game starts. And then you're not here, you're not like, should I warm up again or whatever. You're, just, you're taking care of it before the game, right? The other thing, the main point for me is I'm trying to get an idea of what I'm working with in that game, right? And I'm not going to give them a clinic. I'm not going to berate them for not knowing what they're doing. I'm not going to anything. If anything, I'm going to I'm going to say, do you have any questions on how to how to reset it? And I don't know what the heck all these different devices do, but I might say, you know, what? I'll find an administrator to come over and, and show you how to reset that. Okay, go ahead. You can add something to that. You want to hear the horn too, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. It's different than the game. Yeah, I was getting to that. I, I, I let it, and then I say, after all that, I go run it all the way down. I want to hear it. And then right after that horn goes off, I want to hear the game horn. So I know the difference between the two. Right? And it's just, it's just, I just call it the mini time test. I want, to, I want to know everything's working, but I want to know what I'm working with. And then I'm going to go back to my crew and go, guys, it's going to be a long night. Shot. <laughs> right? You guys have seen it. You know? We see it even at the Division I level. Sacramento State, go over there. They've been going over there for four years. And they won't, they won't get rid of this lady. No matter how many reports every crew chief puts in out of every game. Go over every time they do this, she goes, We're gonna do that. I go, yes, please, we get it. Come on, okay. We got another long night, guys. I'm shot. Here we go. First ten minutes, four resets, two errors. It's just what you get. So just think about that. I think it's a really good thing. Crew communication. If if you have a timing error, and this applies to everything, but I put it in the time section. <coughs> If you have a timing error, or you have something to talk about as a crew, and you get together, only bring the facts. And do not say I think. Okay? You either know or you don't know. And in, in crew communication, in my opinion, and we can debate this or whatever, in my opinion, if you are 99% sure, you don't know. Okay? That's just my opinion. If you come to me, for information, if you are not 100% sure, I don't want to talk to you. Okay? Because you're saying, I think. I, it's just my opinion. You get to the 50 50s, it, it gets a little bit more understandable, right? That's a pretty strong statement for me to say. If you're 99% sure, don't come to me, right? But that's how strongly I feel based on experience of a guy coming to me telling me, I think, us going a certain way kicking a rule, getting suspended, losing a thousand dollar check. Don't tell me you think, okay? Just something to think about. Um, I'm smart this time, four hours. Let me know in four hours. We will not have it yet. Also, I think it's critically important. Too many times when we get together, we just start talking. We start, oh, team A had the ball, and, and the, you know, inadvertent dribble, and ball goes out of bounds, and I don't know if we hit the runner on it, and I think he saved it, whatever, instead of just talking about what happened. What actually happened? It was a live ball, number 25 had possession, he passed it, 10 blue jumped out of bounds with two hands, 
redirected the ball back onto the court, and the white team retained possession. Got it. Reset. Right? So just think about it. Just stick to what happened. Uh, end of game situations. So I just think it's important. Um, what are some end of game situations? A team's trying to foul to extend the game. Yep. Mm -hmm. That could be one minute, be four minutes, right? Yeah. Yep. In the game. What else? Last shot. Last shot. Um, last sh uh, two for ones. Some some high school coaches are starting to understand what a two for one is. You guys know what a two for one is? Mm -hmm. Fifty seconds left on the game clock. Thirty five on the shot clock. You want to get down and get shot within ten seconds. Because then you're at forty. New shot clock period 35, you're going to get the ball back one more time. Right? Two for ones. Understand that. Understand the little ones. We have a little sign. It's like this, meaning there's a second or two difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Um, what else? What are some other in the game? Oh, it's in the game. You want to know what the score is? Or, you know, if they need one point, two point, three points? Yep. So it's going to dictate the play coming up. True. Time out. Timeouts left. Timeouts left. Yep. <laughs> yep. Good. Delay offense. Delay offense. Yeah. I got whatever. Every high school ball, we didn't have a shot clock. Foul situations, perhaps? There were teams that would pack in against Rainier Beach in the first quarter. <laughs> What's that? Foul situations. Foul situations, whether it's four or five or six, take fouls. We need to know individual players who's got. Yeah. I think it was all kind of applied at time. Is there any rules that change under a minute? <clears throat> High school now, or anything that's just let me hear stuff. We, we have the substitutions. You guys have the, no, no, if there's an inadvertent whistle under a minute, no, no, nothing. So, nothing in high school. We have a few things just under a minute in the second half, where if it's inadvertent whistle, delay a game, uh, blood, injury, stuff like that, they can't sub under 59.9. Clock stops under 59.9, second half. But no rule changes under a minute of any quarter, so that doesn't apply. It's great to know, though, because these coaches watch Division One basketball, and they might come out to you very insistent that this rule applies yeah. to be able to say, no, yeah. it doesn't apply in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who joined? What, what, what's your name? Ray Clark. Ray? Yeah. yeah. Good to see you. Abe. Abe. Cool. Thanks. Welcome, guys. Um, cool. Any other thing on timing? All pretty much makes sense. Good stuff to think about. I was say the biggest problem I have is people that get caught up watching the end of the game and forget to start the clock. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Back here, yeah. good stuff you said all yeah. the way through, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. That's some pretty good timing stuff, huh? Pretty good to talk about. Okay. Let's go on to correctable errors. Um, I can. I put a game check on it that could go out and work a high school game tomorrow <clears throat> without ever knowing what the correct player rules are. Because you know what? I'm not going to have one. No. Never happened. Probably just curse myself. <laughs> 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 but I, I, I honestly don't think I ever will. I know them. I know what the situations they are. <clears throat> you know? In college, green, awarding unmerited free throw, not awarding a merited free throw. Shoot play wrong player shoots a free throw. God forbid shoot a free throw at the wrong basket. Or erroneously counting or canceling the score. I know the rules. I know when I can change them and stuff or what to do. Um, but golden rule, <coughs> don't let them happen. You can know them. They get real confusing, what they are. There's about four pages in the book. There's probably four pages in the rule book of correctable errors, right? They're confusing. Whether it happens during the live ball or the dead ball, or the timing when you can go change it or not, or this and that, they're confusing. Slow down. Or how can we not let them happen? Just slow down. Get it right. If you know you got a bad table, and it's just and you report, and they say mm -mm, seven, you know, bonus. Say 
if, if, if you're just unsure, say, are you sure it's seven fouls? Okay. Or they say it's, it's six fouls. Are you sure it's six or are we in the bonus? Just slow down and just get it right. Um, sometimes we don't have a chance. Absolutely, sometimes we don't have a chance. You know? uh, crew communication, we, we can talk, we can look, you know, we can make eye contact, we can make sure we're good, we can make sure we have the right shooter, we can double check. If you ever, if you ever have a feeling like, God, that just doesn't seem like that guy's the shooter. Are we sure? You ever, you ever had that feeling? You ever just been quiet about it? I have. You ever then got a couple possessions and then got, damn, glad nobody said something. Hope that was the right shooter. <laughs> just, just that. It's 40. You know, are you sure? Are you sure? Don't say, I think it was 24, unless you know it was 24. But if it doesn't feel right, go, are we sure it was 40? <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, cool. I just did feel a little uneasy. Cool, let's go. Table, tables roll, too. The table, the table can help sometimes. You know, you can go back and really, you know, if you want, they can count the personal fouls. And you can check a book at a, at, a, at a bench even if you have to. You, you still got to go with what's at the table in the book, but you can check around. And, so just know the tables roll tool. So know them. I started with that. We still got to know them, even though I'm going to stand up here and tell you I'm never going to have what happened. And you guys say, well, wait, you know the rules. Well, yeah, because it could be coming. <laughs> um, if you ever feel that there is a correctable error situation, and this applies to us too, where we have the, the monitor that you see guys going to all the time for five minutes at the college level now, it's ridiculous, but stop the game at the earliest time possible and know the time of the parameters, right? So the reason I say stop the game at the earliest time possible is what's the worst that can happen during an inadvertent whistle? Anybody? If we look bad, right? We don't really. Team A has the ball, and you blow your whistle. And you say, "I just need to make sure we do not have a correctable error situation. Did we? Did we have the wrong player attempt that free throw? No, we're good. Okay, no, we're good. All right, Team A ball in bounds. You look bad because it kind of sends this thing like you don't like you lost control or you don't really know what you're doing." But that's really the worst thing that can happen. The only time something really bad happens with an inadvertent whistle is when team A has the ball, right? Team B coach calls timeout. And you, whoop! Oh, shoot. Team A has the ball. Right? Who's done it? <coughs> I've done it. Right? So we look bad. Something really bad happens then. Because you know what? It's a dead ball. Now team B can call the timeout. Did you guys know that? Have you ever seen somebody say, oh, no, 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 you can't call a timeout right now? Have <laughs> you seen somebody do that? That's wrong. That's the time where you have to say, you're exactly right. Give it to me. Whatever you want to say, <laughs> I was wrong. Just, just give it to me and get it out of the way. Right? So I, I bring it up to just stop the game at the earliest time if you have, because then you know you're within the parameters, right? You know you're within the parameters to fix something. And you don't even have to get confused with that. So I don't want to spend any more time on correct lawyers. But if you guys have some questions, we can talk more about it. Are we good? Everybody agree? You just not look. Yes, let's go here first. When you say timing parameters, are you talking about the game clock and the shot clock? Or like that? No, I'm talking about um, the, the time that you legally have to correct a correct lawyer. There's a timing parameter involved. So if it's a dead ball, meaning we call the foul, and it was six fouls, it's supposed to be seven, team A is supposed to shoot one and one. I'm pretty sure it's the same as caught. If the ball goes up and down twice, after the second live ball, you no longer can go back and fix that error. Right? In high school, it has to do with the clock starting and stopping. Once the ball becomes live and the clock starts the second time, you can no longer. Right. So know the parameters, because regardless of if you catch it a couple a minute later, sometimes you don't even have to get into the conversation. You just go, we're outside the timing parameter. We can no longer correct that error, right? 
quickly, can you tell us what this will actually look like on the board? So we think we have a correctable error, we blow it dead, we confer with the partner, and then how do we communicate that with the players, our crew, and the coaches that we checked, it's not a correctable error, we're moving on. Okay, so let, let's just pick one. Uh, let's pick the bad one. We're supposed to, sh we're supposed to shoot a one and one We don't. <laughs> we give team A the ball, right? They pass it in, nail a three-pointer, right? Basket's in, team B goes to take the ball out of bounds, er, 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 stop the game, right? Because it's flat ball, kind of flat ball, dead ball. Stop the game, oh, what do we got? Go to the table, what do we got? Jeff, team A was in the bonus. We should have shot one of one on that last foul, okay? Oh, hey, we got something we're gonna need to talk about. White, please go to your bench. Blue, please go to your bench. Partners, this is a, this is a situation where you've cleared the floor, okay? We have to get this right, right? We come together, we talk about what happened, okay? We slow down, we talk about, first off, what I would say is, okay guys, Let's first determine if we have, if we're within the timing parameter. And we say, okay, we're supposed to shoot one one. We have one live ball. It's high school, so the, the clock stopped. Yes, we're within the timing parameter. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, what happened? Team A was supposed to shoot. Who? You're gonna have to know who. <laughs> see, see what I mean about what happened? Okay. 20. I'm 100% confident the foul was on 10 blue, or I mean 10 white, 20 blues are shooter. Okay, cool. We got that. Okay? Now what happened? Made basket. Ooh. Made three pointer. Count. Does it count? Yep. Yep. Shucks. Because I'm about to get the coaches together and one guy's not going to be too happy with that. Right? Five point play, possibly. Okay? Okay, so we know we know the basket counts. Wow. Okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna shoot the one and one, right? Yes. Okay. How are we gonna play off of it? Are we gonna line up players or not? In high school, you are. Okay, in college, or not. I don't think you're lining up players because it's the point. The point of interruption is made three pointer. If there would not have been a change of possession, meaning supposed to shoot, take the ball out of bounds, they throw it in, they dribble, ball goes out of bounds, and it's teammates' ball. If there's been no change of possession, then you line them up and play off the make or miss. But you go to, and it's, you see how I'm taking this in steps? And, and, and how much better of a chance you have of getting it right? Rather than, hey, what do you guys think? Oh shoot, correctable error. Where are we going to take the ball out of bounds? What are we going to do? Who's the shooter? Who's the, okay, I'm going to go get the coaches. <laughs> you ever done it? I've done it. I want to get out of there and put the ball back and play as quick as I can, and then I get the coaches together, and I'm like, oh, shoot, what do I say? Right? So then, and this all happens a little bit quicker, but not much quicker than, than we're talking about right here, right? So, so then we have it, right? We know we're going to shoot. Nobody lined up. We know 20 is our shooter. And then we're going to give the ball to team B, and does he get, does he get to run the end line or not? Yes. Yeah. You're going to get it back. Yeah, was it a made basket? Yeah, it was a made basket. Oh, they, get, they always get to run after a made basket. So yeah, he gets to run. I just connected like seven rules, right? So then you say, okay, Rochambeau, who's going to talk to the coach? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, then, then in that, the crew chief would talk to the coach. Okay, so they say, okay, guys, I'm going to get the coach. Coach, coach, come here. Um, and I probably started with, um, I can tell you right now, you're not going to be happy with one part of this. Okay, what we have is a correctable error situation, right? Team A was in the bonus on the common foul, ten foul twenty. You're supposed to shoot one and one. However, we were not notified by the table, and we'll accept that error on ourselves too. But we all made the mistake along with the table. Okay? Ball was inbounded, three pointer. By rule, that three pointer is successful and still counts. By rule. Okay? 
Here, he, by rule, this is a correctable error situation under the timing parameters. We're going to line up 20 with nobody on the on the lane. Team B, you're going to get the ball out of bounds run. We're going to go on. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions on the rule interpretation? No? Okay. That's it. You notice I used the word by rule yep. three or four times. Is so that is that a good? <coughs> <laughs> right? You you had a comment, Peyton. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Cool. All right. Substitutions. <coughs> you control the pace. Right. Uh, different levels, different whatever. I mean, I. I've done all the AAU games. I've done the 10 games a day. I've done the, I've done the Reno tournaments. I've done the, you know, I've done the deal where we just get in and out and the kids are running on. Believe me, I'm not being a total um, stickler to do, to, to stick with all the time. But you, you control the pace. So in that JV, you know, sophomore JV varsity game where, you know, everybody's there. It's not an AAU or a youth or a rec or a, Whatever setting, you control the pace. Just slow down, you know, bring them in when you're ready. If they run on the court, just stop, hey, hold on, slow down for me. Go back, please, I'm gonna report my foul. Thank you. You tell a kid to go back, and they go back, and then you pull them in, say thank you. You know, help yourself out. Um, <coughs> know when, how, and where, so, what are some of the, uh, oh, we'll talk about it in a second. I put it up there. Um, uh, so just know when, how, and where, um, and, and we can get into that down here. Uh, watch the players as they leave the floor. The job's not done until the <coughs> players out there. Technically, you know, there's these rules about are they still a player before they get to the bin. All this stuff. Just, just watch the players as they leave the floor. So atypical situations. So, Know when, how, and where. Th these are really the times where substitutions get a little tricky, right? Injured player. Um, what do you guys have? Blood, they got to go. They can be bought in with a timeout at the time of uniform. <coughs> yeah. okay. um, you guys have new stuff on head injuries. Uh, we had concussion last concussion year. Concussion stuff, right? Yesterday at our general meeting, um, we reviewed the blood rule. Yeah. Okay. We have a new one. It used to, is a women's rule. We do it in the men's college now. Where they get 20 seconds to figure out blood, and then they can still get a timeout. Trying to keep the players in the game. Um, you guys, it, it's all up to the to the medical staff, right? Whether you as far as saturation. What about blood? Is it still on us? On in a high school game, if there's blood on a uniform, that uniform is not coming back into the game. Gotcha. So the okay. uniform must be changed outside the confines and visual area of the court with an adult supervision, um, and they can use a timeout to do that. <coughs> but they still have to be ready to go at the first one. I okay. do got a question on that. So if they do change the uniform and they have a different number, there's no penalty for blood if you change the uniform. You just make sure it's recorded properly in the book. Yep. Okay. Um, but they got to go out. Right? Blood, blood dead, no discussion, no nothing. The player has to leave the game for a little bit of time. Tick of the clock, right? Okay. I like that. I wish we still did that if they put this new thing in this year. But, uh, disqualified player, right? What's the procedure for the disqualified player? Who has to be notified? Coach, does the player have to be notified? By rule? Well, we have a mechanical procedure that's in the mechanic book. So yep. just notify, get the info from the bench, notify the coach, then notify go get your crew, notify the player, start our call. Okay. They gotta be ready on the second one, right? Not Within, running. and what is it, 20 seconds? <coughs> What's it, nice? We have 20. 20 it's like college. 20? Or at 5? Or or at 15? Or at 15. 15. Hours. So, 20, five seconds elapsed, horn. Coach, you gotta be ready. 15 more seconds, horn's gotta be on. Gotcha. Um, 
another five or seven seconds goes by. <laughs> Live another day. No, hey, delay no, back. Hey, no, 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 air. Ten does a second horn on a disqualified play in high school. So say that again. Does a does a start clock to twenty? There's a horn that goes off in five. And, Correct. And, really? So in high school, there's so always there's supposed to be there's right. always a horn with fifteen seconds to go. Okay. Uh, multiple substitutions, you know, so no, um, if, if there's four subs there and we're shooting two free throws, we have a disqualified player that has to be replaced because he's disqualified, can they all come in? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. So just know those situations. There's a few atypicals. Uh, timeouts, when do they have to be there? Before the, before the first one is right? Like during the timeout. If he's running there, he might be there. I don't know if you like the coach or not. I, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> um, and then game changers, just kind of know, you know. Uh, we, we see that with the, um, some of the bigs, you know, they, you see this in high school too, the, 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 the six, seven guy, the big husky guy. Um, coming in sometimes that changes the game. So just know substitution situation, take fouls. Know that they might bring somebody off the bench whose role is to foul, you know, for that. So it's just kind of knows something game change. Anything else on substitution? That's pretty good overview. Yeah. Sorry, um, no, absolutely. Well, um, good. I do have a question about the injured players who play on the player. Okay. When they have to be able to shoot a free throw. Yep. So, uh, so if I'm you know, shooting and I get injured, the, the coach will obviously take the pick who's shooting us. Tim, what's the high school rule? I mean, you have your book open. The, the, so, the, yeah. the, the, the right sub who comes in for it. The, the, coach just, the coach of the team who's the player who's injured gets the pick. Okay. The shooter. So it has to be a sub. Right. That's right. right. New substitute. Right. Right. So no matter what, whether it's a flagrant, <coughs> Personal foul, whether it's blood or injury, the team A is going to shoot. A one's hurt. Team A coach picks anybody off the bench. To shoot. This is always where I said their coach. That's that's a college. The college rule. You guys care about it? No, no, they don't worry about it. <laughs> but we we can talk after that. Yeah, that's the college rule. If it's a common personal foul. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Injured player. We talked a little bit about the substitution, but I just want to talk a little bit about philosophy. This is the fourth thing. That's to talk about. So uh, clear the floor, right? Kids down. You know, hurt to where he needs medical assistance. Um, clear the floor. Uh, who can be on the floor? The medical personnel. Coach. Medical personnel, trainer, and the head coach? Yeah. 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 Right? Okay. You have to beckon them <laughs> by rule, yes. right? Yes. But if a kid's unconscious and the head coach runs out, you're going to whack him? No. No. Right? <clears throat> be a steward of the game, right? Uh, dead ball officiate. Uh, I'm going to jump down to here. Dead ball officiate, get to the guy that's got fouled or hurt. And I'm not talking about a kid who's out, right? But if you have a hard foul, so, 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 so come up here, come up here, Daniel. This is just an advanced concept. It's taught this by Scott Twardowski, who just got hired in the NBA. He's a coma guy. So you hard foul him, okay? You hard foul him, right? Here, here's what. Pretty good there. Yeah. What, what have we been doing? We usually go and get to this guy, right? Well, we'll get away. I'm getting to him. Okay? So start getting up. Start getting up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, easy. And now, you know, we have these hands. Why don't we put the hands on the players and stuff, whatever. Just let's not get into that debate. But I'm going to do the right thing for the game. I'm going to get to him, not him. Because who's going to retaliate? Yeah, right? So I want to get to him. Hey, whoa, Tim, we got it. We got it, Tim. Just work with me. 
Easy, easy. We're going to take care of him too. Just easy. Don't do anything. I got you covered. Right? It's just a concept I've never even heard of. I used to always go after this guy. Yeah. So just, common sense. Though, yeah. Right. Common sense. I'm going to get him. He's the one who, 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 yeah. who made the action. Go to the guy who got fouled or was hurt. Was up, you know, was out. Um, get away and don't comment. Don't say a word. I think he's I think he got knocked out. I think it was a punch. I think just don't say anything when it comes to an injured player. Just, you know, say, coach, please come. Trainer, please come. Players to their benches, get away. Right? Hopefully, when there's really hard fouls, we actually had a whistle. <clears throat> ECOA, we had one. Get dumped, came down every week. We, it was the longest patient delayed whistle you've ever seen. We came back four minutes later after the kid after the kid uh, left the court and called foul. <laughs> you guys understand what I mean? It was a no call, but the ambulance came. <laughs> and so we decided just to put a foul on the play. And it helped the camp, helped the officials look a little better in that situation. <laughs> I don't know if this is the right time for this kind of a question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Cool. Is you got a kid who uh, goes to take a charge, the offensive player manages to avoid him or make really minimal contact, but then basically flops. He's down in the paint, there's eight other guys around. Um, you know, what do you do? You, what, you, you don't want that guy getting hurt or worse yet other people getting hurt tripping over him. He's kind of fake the play. You know, he's kind of maybe faking an injury or, or whatever. I go, well, how, how do you officiate something like that? Do you think that pertains in this, this area? Or? So it's the flop equals block discussion. In my opinion. I think, this is my opinion, um, if, if, if you know the tendency of a team is to flop, uh, we had one a couple years ago, uh, Green River Community College, two years ago, was known for flopping. So pregame was, first flop we see, it's a flop. Crew agreed to it, we signed the contract, we went out, we saw a flop, it's a flop. Because we'd seen stuff in games that, didn't, that we didn't like. Is that right, wrong, or indifferent? It's probably a little wrong, to be honest. You know, but that's the picture they painted for us. If that's if, if you don't have tendencies, I'd say the, the red flag goes up on a flop, right? And I think there should be some crew communication, and you all should agree should agree or disagree that next time we see that flop, we're going to put a block on it. Personal opinion, I put blocks. If I see a flop, I call a block. And I'll even go up and go. What's, what's I'll even go up. We. You know what I call the block? 90% of players go, yep, it's a flop. <laughs> it's effective. So, it's a... Okay, guys down on the... So you just you just whistle it dead with the block then. You, that stops the play, nobody's going to... Yeah, hopefully but then you, you're, you're talking about the one where it's, where it's marginal. I mean, you know, it's a flop, but it wasn't really an, an intentional flop. You guys know what the fever rule is for flop? What group? FIBA, no. International Basketball? No. Technical foul. Do you know what the high school rule is? It's, 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 it's a technical it's foul. foul. It's a technical foul. Second time, right? First time. First, First, First time. time? The high school rule book says if you flop, it's a technical foul. Well, well, same in soccer, soccer, but they never call it. So, this is great. So, here's a way you can divide it up in high school basketball. And this. I, I think you would get consensus from most people, but again, we're, we're always going back to the pregame contract and what do you pregame and how do we call this effectively as a crew throughout the game. This is what I pregame with my crews. Number one, a flop is a technical foul. So we could go out and put technical fouls into every game, but then you're getting into that gray area of was it really a flop? Was it marginal contact? Did he fall because he got hit a little? So here's how I divide it up in my head. Number one, I'm, I'm actually a little more um, vocal about it, if I, if I see a player flop 
And like you said, there's eight other players around, and now he's clogged the whole lane. He's created you know, a problem for the, the game. He's restricted people's freedom of movement because now they can't move to their positions, and he's probably going to get someone else injured by clogging up this whole play. I'm calling a block immediately. I'm saying, boop. And then I'm saying loud for everyone to hear, a flop is a block. Yep. Two shots. I like that. Now I've communicated to 10 people that if you flop in this game, it's going to be a block. And my partners and I have already pre gamed it. So now, usually you've ended it. Now, Not so much that you're blocking the, the shooter, but you're blocking the other people's freedom of movement? Or it doesn't matter? Yeah, it doesn't, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Now, the coach can't <laughs> possibly have anything to say. And if he does have a question, because we stay table side in high school, if he has a question and says, you know, I don't think uh, that was enough contact for a block, I just say, by rule, it's a technical foul. Yeah. And then I listen, acknowledge, get away, I move away. What else can he say? He's not getting a technical foul on the player. Now, if it's a flop and it's, you know, that one-on-one -on -one play where it has nothing to do with anything, it doesn't impact the game, maybe we have some other choices then. Maybe that's when we can get to him during a dead ball or remind him right there, do not flop, it's going to be a block tonight. Or do not flop, that's a technical foul by rule. Yeah. But when it clogs up the lane, we, we have to put something on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I did. Um, I, I did a thing on pregame contract a couple years ago, and I just wanted to throw this in here because really what we're talking about is game management. Some old school thoughts are uh, set the tone early, you know, referee the first two minutes each quarter. Last two minutes of the half, or be, don't miss anything at the end of the game, you know, whatever. I, I don't buy into any of that. Personal opinion, take it for what it's worth. In my opinion, it's four by two by four. Okay? Four minutes times two equals one quarter. I hope my math is correct here. Uh, one quarter times four equals a successful game. In my opinion, it's nothing else but 32 minutes of solid work. Every night every game. Just think about it as a concept. I don't try to go out and be anything different, set the tone two minutes, all that kind of stuff. I, I referee will be pregame. I referee the NCAA has asked me to this year. I referee the rules as they're written. I referee what me and the crew has developed in the contract, and that's what I go out and do. Just think about it as a concept. We, we could debate it. It's, it's all good. Just think about it as a concept. Um, just read this. And in my opinion, this epitomizes what we do and what we should do. Sometimes uh, my voice does have a suggestion of homelessness. So I use this list to ground myself. This stuff will be posted, right? So this stuff will be posted, downloaded, printed. If this makes sense to you and you like it, use it. Don't credit me, I didn't make it up. <laughs> Ever heard of JDFIU? Ever heard of DFIU? 
<laughs> Everybody got it? Yeah. It's an old school yeah. Yeah. Just don't F it up. Yeah. How about just get it right? <laughs> I don't know how to because I have F it up. <laughs> and, and it doesn't work for me to go into a game saying just don't F it up. <laughs> it works for me to go into a game saying let's just get it right. You know? Because you can F something up and get together and get it right by rule. We talked about Freddie Blair. So just, just another concept to think about. And I think that's it. I was going to end with, with this. I talked about this slide showing you ideal official and game manager, game manager. But there's a video that really shows you. Hey, thanks, thanks for coming. Thank you. There's a video on YouTube that really shows that really epitomizes the ideal basketball official. Mechanically, game management is the best thing I've seen put together. So just let's watch this and we'll end with this. No, this is a, an ad. <laughs> Skill and clearly what he had as far as a connection to that to that league and community and everything to, to be effective in that situation. So anyway, um, uh, if if anybody, I, I can stick around for a few minutes. Uh, I think that's good. When the time is right there, are there any questions for the good of the group? The, the things we covered. No? no. So again, thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to come here and learn and talk through some things and, and get ready for the season. And uh, I hope I hope some of this was beneficial for you guys too. Thanks for having me. So the uh, you guys can